Her unhealthy workers could cost organizations about $530 billion in annual productivity losses. That's according to the World Economic Forum. The International SOS Foundation is calling for more preventive health programs, saying every dollar spent gives a return of around $2.50. Studies say these could include flexi work arrangements. For more, we're joined by Dr. David Teo. He's Regional Medical Director at International SOS. Thanks so much for joining us this evening, Dr. Teo. Now, uh, just Good very evening. quickly, mm. yes, for each dollar we spend, we spend in prevention, the gain potentially is $2.50. How do you get to that figure? Well, uh, we have been doing uh, surveys and assistance to uh, thousands of companies in Fortune 500. And uh, recently, we did one big, big uh, program, and then we analyzed two specific programs. One of them was looking at the medical screening of travelers and international assignees around the world. And the other one combined with our Malaysia Prevention Program. And then we matched it against the assistance we provide to the people who are sick or fallen ill and seeking our assistance versus a pool of travelers that call us for help. So essentially we do about, uh, receive about maybe, uh, say about 1.2 million uh, calls a year, right? And then we do about maybe 1,200 evacuations a year. So after looking at the whole thing that like we were team analysis, right? We're able to come in to come up with this figure of uh, every $1 we put in, right? For preventive measure health program, there's a saving for the company of about two dollars fifty three cents. Uh, I'm wondering because uh, the promotion of health and well being, you know, when it comes to health, it can be quite a sensitive, emotional topic. So, is it at odds to promote health and well being on one hand, and yet on the other hand to calculate uh, how much companies are saving in dollars and cents? Uh, should there perhaps be other parameters that can be considered in measuring? Well, I think when we are dealing with companies, right, I think the money is a big thing right? because you're spending money. Now, even if it's $1, right, for the company who are spending, right, it is something to them. So organization in, in their management, they, see straight, they need to absolutely very clear and compelling argument why the money has been spent, right, and then the versus other, other methodology, right. So when we go in, right, like for us, our company, we need to help them to set up their well-being program. We need to give them the statistics. That only then they are more willing to part with the money now, right, to spend on the workforce. Well, Dr. Tio, uh, Jill mentioned earlier in this bulletin, it was one of our headline stories, Singapore's National Trades Union Congress, the NTUC, is proposing to make flexible working arrangements official at the workplace. But there are also concerns that uh, they need also to manage employees' expectations. So it's not just... I don't feel like coming to work. I can work from home. And in a way, it's not a black and white thing. You can redesign, restructure how one comes to work, the kind of work that one does to make flexible work arrangements part and parcel of the actual overall structure of work at any workplace. Uh, is this something, uh, how would you go about, I suppose, designing a structure for flexible arrangements at work? Well, thank you. Very interesting question. I, I think firstly, I'd like to offer something different first, right? Number one, I'm not sure, you have, have you heard about the paradox in terms of well-being, right? So today, in what we know, right, we have done lots and lots of surveys with companies, right? The well-being out there, right, in terms of individual workers now, right? Okay, in terms of behaviour change, perhaps, in terms of knowledge gain, we have more and more companies are spending a bit more now, right? However, <laughs> there's a move. Versus what I think Singapore is trying to do to have flexi work arrangement, more and more companies are maybe around the world, or maybe outside Singapore, are moving towards pushing their employees to come back to work. Okay, that is increasing, actually causing such a, a storm out there as well. But we know that flexi work, uh, flexi work arrangement is good, all right? So I think it's also very much industry based, right? But example, in the industry, in the construction sector, construction setting and in the offshore marine, some of this, this lo location, you just can't really do a, work, a flexible work arrangement, right? Okay, but on the other hand, there are other, other jobs you can do, we can really look at work adjustment, right? One of the challenges company always tells us is that how the managers, supervisors are able to spot 
you know, manage this workforce, right, who are having this flexible work arrangement. So one of the, the, the encouragement for a company to set up this is actually provide training to train the managers, able to manage these people, right? Uh, because different type of work shift pattern where from home, flexible work hours, they are able to manage their staff, right, wherever they are. So most companies find that it's a challenge. Second thing is that the flexi work hours sometimes not always good for the, I, I'm sure you guys know, that it is not always good for the mental health. Sometimes the reverse, I mean, when people have flexi work hours work from home, sometimes they get more stressed right? because there's no clock to tell them to stop work. All right, so this is how to train the manager to spot signs of mental stress when working from home. Right, and that's, that's what I'm saying, that companies need to create Another thing, what we call it, a uh, psychological safe workplace for them, for the employees to be able to approach mm -hmm. their bosses to ask that they want to go on flexi work hours as well. Yeah, it's an interesting point that you bring up because the paper also recommends a review of key operational needs and job outcomes for flexible work arrangements, not to just work, but, but to really thrive and succeed. Uh, does that adequately balance both the employee health while ensuring the organisation gets what it needs? Well, I, I, okay. I, I would say that there's always a balance between the economy, right? While we, we want to go towards this, right, I think we look at outside Singapore now, right? Right, A lot of countries now because of inflation. And we also know that a lot of companies like the high-tech company now actually are slowing down now, which we know, right? And there's a pressure for them to post, boost productivity, right? So as a, as a result, the pressure cooker outside is getting higher and higher now, right? So how to balance it by having a flexible work arrangement? I think this too can come to a uh, thing when there's a cultural change. Okay, today a lot of well-being programs focus on individual and checking the box. I have, I have something on, I check the box. Right? I have a flexible arrangement. I have some mental health program. I check the box. It is okay. But we found a success story. Most of it is when companies, let's say maybe Singapore company, willing to touch on the culture, culture changes of the company, like company culture changes. That will, I think will get the thing moving. But without changing the culture, it's very hard to implement flexible arrangement. All right, we really appreciate your thoughts in that uh, interesting discussion, uh, uh, Dr. Teo. We've been speaking there with Dr. David Teo, Regional Medical Director, International SOS.